uh, Leonard Bernstein said uh, that there are only 12 melodies ever written. Um, do you believe the same is, this, uh, is true of stories and if that relates to art and religion? I think, I think it's true. The same stories are told over and over again. Um, they are reinterpreted according to their time. But it's extraordinary how the motives reappear. reappear. Um, a great scholar like Campbell points out dozens and dozens of traditions which have, say, the virgin birth. Um, uh, if you take if you take my, my work, I mean, people think that Mad Max was to some degree innovative. It basically uh, dressed up in new clothes, very, very classic stories. Um, so I think, I think it was essentially right. But they need to be reinterpreted according to the time. They, they, they can't be told in the same way because you see it, you see it everywhere. You, know, you see um, alien abductions, for instance, are the equivalent of being possessed once before when the currency was devils and demons. It's the same process, different clothing. Um, uh, I was, my question sort of had to do with, um, uh, do you think that quantum, quantum mechanics has a lot to do, or quantum theory has a lot to do with the death of monotheism, uh, for instance? Um, one of the people that, you know, invented quantum mechanics, Einstein, didn't believe in it and was a monotheist himself, a Zionist. Um, do you think that um, with the uh, kind of paradox that you find in quantum mechanics that it's going to turn people back onto the older religions and the older mythologies that uh, might help us explain those paradoxical little uh, questions that you ask and it presents another one. Uh, gee, that's a great question. I, I, you know, obviously the answer is I, I haven't got a clue. Uh, <laughs> the, the, but but I, um, I do know it's taken me a long time to even get a hint of, of what quantum mechanics is about. Um, and as I said, what I tried to get across in my lecture, the metaphors have to be discovered to, disco to do that. I mean, that's the extraordinary thing about mythology. It anticipates the big questions. And no matter where you are, even, even if you're in a very old culture, it doesn't deny you the privileged moment. The you know, in 50 years' time... Enlightenment, perhaps. Enlightenment, whatever, but in 50 years' time, um, we, the world, in many ways, will be indistinguishable from magic. Uh, when Byron Kennedy, my business partner, partner died in 83, he was, a, he was a science nut. He never saw a mobile phone, 83. He never saw a fax machine. He never heard the word internet. That was less than two decades ago. So the question is, who's privileged? And the thing that astonishes me about mythology and religious tradition is that no matter where you are in time, you can participate in the awe that Campbell referred to. And that's the extraordinary thing for me right here in this, in this country, we have a culture standing alongside our culture, hardly there anymore, which has a way of being in the world that anticipated possibly even 100,000 years ago these questions, a sense of interconnectedness, which is more profound than most of us have, Aboriginal culture I'm talking about. Albert Avolia, Graduate School of Biomedical Engineering at this university. George, the, the idea of mythology, I think, rests on ignorance. The fact that there's got to be a certain amount of ignorance around so that certain things can take place. Do you think they actually could actually go forward in, in the future and actually have a, a real place? Or is it just, for example, have an, an ephemeral quality that makes us feel good 
while we're looking at them, and then they just disappear. Um, I don't think they would have any efficacy if they weren't of the time. And maybe I'm working, believe it or not, on another Mad Max film, and it may not work for that very reason that you've identified. It may no longer be potent. And you probably might look at the contemporary cinema box office to look at what, what somehow is speaking. I haven't seen it, but the film Matrix, which is dealing with at least the terrain of cyberspace, might be a reinterpretation of these sort of things. Um, but, you know, we have a fantastic amount of knowledge in this moment, unprecedented. It exceeds that of a decade ago. But we are going to be incredibly in ignorant in 20, 30, 100 years. Um, by then, who knows what the essential motives will be, but, it's, but they will basically take us through, the, through similar journeys. Um, they'll just be reinvented. I, I, I think I'm saying the same thing over again. Um, I keep on asking about the privileged point of view. It surely can't be anyone who just outlives anybody else. Um, it, it, it has to be in this moment, wherever you are. And I think the metaphors of mythology open us up to that experience that, that as Campbell calls it, that rapture of being alive to be joyful in the sorrow and majesty of life. That moment is available to us wherever we are in time and space.